What's up everyone, it's DSP and welcome to another edition of uh, Cooking with the King, or Poorly Cooking with the King as I've termed it, because I still think this series is a joke, but people seem to enjoy it, so I'm going to keep going on with it. Um, today is going to be another breakfast, uh, which I know a lot of people will say, oh, you keep doing breakfast. Well, breakfasts are some of the quickest and easiest things that you can cook, and I'd rather get these out of the way before I try to tackle any more advanced recipes. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to make a family favorite of mine and to be completely honest I used to eat this all the time as a kid but I don't remember what we used to call it and I think my mother actually termed it egg with the hole in the middle and if you you know you hear that you're like what the hell does that mean um, what you're gonna see is it's a pretty easy thing to cook um, you can do some variations on it depending on what you like exactly in your breakfast and uh, you can go from there so anyway here's what you need for ingredients you need two pieces of white bread you need butter or Pam, as you know, I used to like to use Pam to spray my, uh, my pans. Two pieces of cheese, or to your liking, whatever kind of cheese you like. And two eggs. I prefer jumbo white, but you can go ahead and get, you know, whatever kind you like. What you're going to do is basically this is going to be an interesting kind of a, a open face sandwich slash, well, you'll see what I mean. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to take these two pieces of white bread. And what you're going to do is you're going to tear a hole with your hand actually in the center of each piece of bread, okay? And of course, don't let it go to waste, go ahead and eat it. Um, the goal here is you want to think about the size of an egg yolk. If an egg yolk were to go in there, would it be around that size? That's about what you're looking to aim for, for size-wise, for your, your hole in your bread. Okay. So now that that's done, you got your two pieces of white bread with your holes in them. You're going to want to go ahead and spray your pan. You spray your pan. Spray your pan with the pan. And preheat your pan to about medium heat on most stoves. So that's done. Let me get that out of the way. Now we're going to wait for this to heat up a little bit, but just to let you know, additional ingredients in this dish, the very basic ingredients are the white bread, uh, or any kind of bread, it does not have to be white bread by the way, if you like wheat bread, whole wheat, multigrain, you can use whatever you like, um, the eggs and the cheese, that's pretty much three basic ingredients, but you can add other things to this dish, you can add a slice of tomato, you could add some pieces of green pepper if you'd like. You can add bacon, and actually that's what I've done, I've gone ahead and I cooked some bacon ahead of time, that I'm going to add to this dish to make it more complete. So that pan should be heating up. And let me go confirm if it is warm. Oh, actually, it's warm already. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our two pieces of bread. And we're going to slap them down onto our frying pan. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take two eggs. We're going to crack the eggs open. And we're actually going to put the eggs into the open bread. So to kind of show you what I'm doing, let me actually zoom out here. Looks like the zoom on my camera is screwing up because I got a little bit closer. There we go. That looks a lot better. So what I'm going to do is grab two eggs. Go ahead and give them a whack. And crack them. Try to crack them inside of the holes. The key here is to keep the egg in one piece, as you see right there. If you can't avoid it, do not break the yolk. If you break the yolk, the dish could be ruined. Whoops! And that could happen. You might drop your egg shell, but that's okay. Okay. Now you're going to let it sit there and cook a little bit. The ideal thing here is that you're going to start to see underneath the yolk, it's going to start to turn white. And that means that the, the egg whites underneath the yolk are starting to cook. Okay? And it could take a minute or two, um, but what, ideally what we're going to do here is we're going to wait until it looks like the underside of this that has gone through the bread is white and cooked, and then we're going to flip it over, okay? So now the yolk's basically going to be on the bottom side, and you want to be careful when you do that because if you flip it too fast or if you flip it too hard, you might accidentally break your egg yolk, and that's going to just make a runny mess. You're going to have egg yolk yellow all over the bottom of your, your piece of food here. 
Okay, so that's cooking. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip them, okay? And then as soon as you flip them, if you have any additional ingredients that you'd like to add to this dish, whether it be bacon, whether it be a slice of tomato, uh, or anything else, we're going to flip this, and then we're going to put that ingredient on top of each piece of bread. And uh, then what we're going to do is, since it's going to be warming up on that side, we're going to add the cheese, which is going to melt nicely on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, it looks like now finally, as you can see here, it is turning white underneath the egg yolk, which means that basically it's almost ready to flip. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to flip it with my spatula, give it another second or two here. And you can cook this to your liking. Again, I'm the kind of person, I like a slightly runny egg yolk. I don't like it super runny where it makes a, a hideous mess, but I do like it at least like a, 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 a liquid center. Other people don't like that. They like it more healthy. So you can cook, overcook this a little bit if you want, and the egg yolk will be a solid yellow. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to go ahead to do is get the spatula completely underneath. You can tell if it's ready to flip because you'll be able to fit it completely underneath the bread, as you can see. And we're going to flip it. Oops. Go ahead. Don't be afraid to touch your own food. We're going to flip it. We're going to do the same with the other one. Get it completely underneath and flip it like that. Okay? Now, your egg whites will begin to run a little bit because obviously if it's a jumbo egg, the egg whites are going to go over the edges. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to add my additional ingredients, which is going to be a piece of bacon per thing here. Okay? Now I'm going to add the cheese. This is almost, I guess you could call it like an open face bacon, egg, and, and cheese, even though really technically it's not a sandwich because you did bake the hole in the, in the middle of it. It is a little bit different. Um, so that's going to go ahead and cook and melt. And like I said, depending on how you like your eggs, you might cook it a little bit longer, you might cook it a little bit shorter, but ideally you want the cheese to start to melt on top, and that's how you can tell, you know, that it is uh, almost done. You don't want a, a, a raw piece of cheese on top of your, your food here. It'll be a little bit longer. At this point, I might even slightly intensify the heat just to try to get the cheese to melt a little bit better. On this one, it's actually melting nicely. On this one, it looks like the bacon, unfortunately, was curved up a little bit, so the cheese is having a little bit of a hard time melting. But another excellent thing that I have had this with is like a slice or two of tomato on each one. It's great because it's just like having like a, a delicious bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich with a piece of tomato on it, which is always a good, a good addition to something like that. Now, you don't have to put any additional ingredients either. Traditionally, I always used to eat this with nothing else. It was just a piece of cheese on top. So it would melt really quickly. It would be done fairly quickly. As you see, this cheese is now melting. This cheese is now starting to melt. So we're almost ready here. And see how simple this is? It was one flip. There's no complex cooking or anything like that. The only thing is the catch is you need to prepare. If you want to add some more ingredients, you have to prepare them ahead of time, like the bacon or the, the, uh, the tomato. You have to have that ready ahead of time. All right, so my cheese is melting. It's just about ready to go. I'm going to get my plate. Get it ready here. Because again, like I said, I do like the yolk a little bit runny, so I'm going to take it off a little early. But if you like to have a, you know, a, a more cooked yolk, you don't have to take it off as early as me. But here we go. Okay. And what you have, even though I don't know what the real name of it is, because like I said, my family never really knew, I don't remember the name, is two pieces of what we like to call egg with the hole in the middle. Um, and you can eat this several different ways. You can eat it like a piece of toast, you know, just grab it like this, pick it up and eat it. Or you can have a fork and a knife and cut it into pieces and eat it. And that's usually how I eat it. I do a fork and a knife. Now, other thing is the bread, depending on how long you cooked it, it, right now it's just very, very slightly toasted. Some people like it completely toasted. And if that's the case, after you make the hole in your bread, you should probably toast your bread first. In a, in a toaster and then toss it onto the grill. So there's several different uh, variations that you can use to make this. Some other people that I know, they actually go all out 
and instead of just using regular bread, they actually make a piece of French toast first. Then they make this so it's like a French toast egg in the hole in the middle. So it's like doubling up on the meal. It's a French toast plus something else. So there are definitely different variations on this dish. But this is the very basic way to do it. And as you saw, in, within 10 minutes we had it done. So pretty quick way to get a nice tasty breakfast. Um, and healthy depending on you know if you want additional ingredients like bacon or not or tomato you can do very healthy variations on it so also keep in mind you can season I didn't season it at all but when this is cooking you could put salt pepper and things like that on it I actually prefer this dish plain which is why I didn't season but you can add seasoning to your liking as well so that's DSP that's it for this episode of cooking with the king